Hello, second grade smarties, and welcome to Wit and Wisdom, Module 3, Civil Rights Heroes, Lesson 19. Before we dive into the content of our lesson, let's talk about our essential questions. So our essential question, our big pizza question is how can people respond to injustice? Our pizza slice question that we are still seeking to answer is how did Ruby Bridges respond to injustice? And today, our pizza bite question, our content framing question, everyone take a bite out of your pizza, is what do I notice and wonder about the story of Ruby Bridges? So we are reading a second text about Ruby Bridges. And think about when we were exploring the life and the story of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We looked at a first person text and that text was his I Have a Dream speech. And we also read an informational text that was from another author's point of view. It was from another author that wrote about that topic. It wasn't from Dr. King's words. That text was about Dr. King. So I want you to think about Ruby Bridges goes to school, my true story. What injustices do we know that Ruby faced? What injustices did Ruby experience when she was going to school? Tell me in the puzzle. So we know that injustices that she faced was that when she was in kindergarten, she was in segregated schools. She went to a school that was only for black children. But when she started first grade, she was able to go to a whites only school. It was it was a school that they were trying to integrate. But remember, people were yelling at her. They were holding signs telling her to go away, that they didn't want a black child at a white school. We also learned that white parents pulled their children out of schools. And so Ruby had to learn alone with Mrs. Henry. But I want you to think, in that text from Ruby's point of view, how did she respond to those injustices? What did she do even though she experienced injustice? Tell me in the puzzle. She never gave up, right? She kept coming to school. She kept learning. And she kept hoping and wishing that kids would come back. And what eventually happened? They did come back. We also got to see Ruby's perspective, her point of view as an adult. She used her experiences with injustice to tell kids that you can learn and be friends with people who don't look like you. You should always be kind. And it's important to respond to injustices with bravery. She loves going to school and she loves telling her story. And people were impacted by that, right? She was the first African-American child to go into a whites only school. She was the first person to go to in an integrated school. She had to be brave and courageous. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be reading another book about Ruby Bridges. And this book is called The Story of Ruby Bridges. Now, before we read the text, I want you to look at the cover of this book. What do you notice about the cover of this book? Tell me in the ad puzzle. So what I am noticing is that Ruby, I'm assuming this is Ruby, is walking into the school building. I also notice that there are people that are standing in front of a group of people. There are men standing in front of a group of people. What are some wonders that you have about this cover? What is a wonder that you have about the cover of this book? A wonder that I have is why does Ruby's face look so serious? And how is she feeling in this moment? What are your wonders about this cover? Tell me in the up puzzle. All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started with reading this text. Now, I'm going to apologize in advance because Ms. Mason's picture is going to be moving around the screen a lot. But as we are reading, remember those listening goals. We want our body to stay in one place. We want our eyes and our ears to be focused on what is happening in the text. And we want to stay away from distractions. All right, so we are going to be reading the story of Ruby Bridges. 
All right, here we go. Ruby Bridges was born in a small cabin near Tylertown, Mississippi. We were very, very poor. Very, very poor, Ruby said. My daddy worked picking crops. We just barely got by. There were times when we didn't have much to eat. The people who owned the land were bringing in machines to pick the crops. So my daddy lost his job. And that's when we had to move. I remember us leaving. I was four, I think. In 1957, the family moved to New Orleans. Ruby's father became a janitor. Her mother took care of the children during the day. After they w were tucked into bed, Ruby's mother went to work scrubbing floors in a bank. Every Sunday, the family went to church. We wanted our children to be near God's spirit, Ruby's mother said. We wanted them to start feeling close to him from the very start. At that time, black children and white children went to separate schools in New Orleans. The black children were not able to receive the same education as the white children. It wasn't fair, and it was against the nation's laws. In 1960, a judge ordered four black girls to go to two white elementary schools. Three of the girls were sent to McDonough, 19. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges was sent to first grade in the William France Elementary School. Ruby's parents were proud that their daughter had been chosen to take part in an important event in American history. They went to church. We sat there and prayed to God, Ruby's mother said, that we'd all be strong and we'd have courage and we'd get through any trouble. And Ruby would be a good girl and she'd hold her head up high and be a credit to her own people and a credit to all the American people. We prayed long and we prayed hard. On Ruby's first day, a large crowd of angry white people gathered outside the France Elementary School. The people carried signs that said they didn't want black children in a white school. People called Ruby names. Some wanted to hurt her. The city and state police did not help Ruby. The president of the United States ordered federal marshals to walk with Ruby into the school buildings. The marshals kept her safe. Oh, I'm sorry, the marshals carried guns. Think about that, Smarties. Every day for weeks that turned into months, Ruby experienced that kind of school day. She walked to the France school surrounded by marshals, wearing a clean dress and a bow in her hair and carrying her lunch pail. Ruby walked slowly for the first few blocks. As Ruby approached the school, she saw a crowd of people marching up and down the street. Men and women and children shouted at her. They pushed toward her. The marshals kept them from Ruby by threatening to arrest them. Ruby would hurry through the crowd and not say a word. Here's Ruby. The white people in the neighborhood would not send their children to school. When Ruby got inside the building, she was all alone except for her teacher, Mrs. Henry. There were no other children to keep Ruby company, to play with and learn with, to eat lunch with. But every day, Ruby went into the classroom with a big smile on her face, ready to get down to business of learning. She was polite and worked well at her desk, Mrs. Henry said. She enjoyed her time there. She didn't seem nervous or anxious or irritable or scared. She seemed as normal and relaxed as any child I'd ever taught. So Ruby began learning how to read and write in an empty classroom an empty building. Sometimes I looked at her, I'd look at her and wonder how she did it, said Mrs. Henry, how she went by those mobs and sat here all by herself and yet seemed so relaxed and comfortable. Mrs. Henry would question Ruby in order to find out if the girl was really nervous and afraid, even though she seemed so calm and confident. 
but Ruby kept saying she was doing fine. The teacher decided to wait and see if Ruby would keep on being so relaxed and hopeful, or if she gradually began to wear down, or even decide that she no longer wanted to go to school. Then one morning, something happened. Mrs. Henry stood by a window in her classroom, as she usually did, watching Ruby walk toward the school. Suddenly, Ruby stopped, right in front of the mob of howling and screaming people. She stood there facing all those men and women. She seemed to be talking to them. Mrs. Henry saw Ruby's lips moving and wondered what Ruby could be saying. The crowd seemed ready to kill her. The marshals were frightened. They tried to persuade Ruby to move along. They tried to hurry her into the school, but Ruby wouldn't budge. Then Ruby stopped talking and walked into the school. When she went into the classroom, Mrs. Henry asked her what happened. Mrs. Henry told Ruby that she'd been watching and that she was surprised when Ruby stopped and talked with the people in the mob. Ruby became irritated. I didn't stop and talk with them, she said. Ruby, I saw you talking, Mrs. Henry said. I saw your lips moving. I wasn't talking, said Ruby. I was praying. I was praying for them. Every morning, Ruby had stopped a few blocks away from school to say a prayer for the people who hated her. This morning, she forgot until she was already in the middle of the angry mob. When school was over for the day, Ruby hurried through the mob as usual. After she walked a few blocks and the crowd was behind her, Ruby said the prayer she repeated twice a day before and after school. Please God, try to forgive those people because even if they say those bad things, they don't know what they're doing. So you can forgive them just like you did those folks a long time ago when they said terrible things about you. All right. So that was the story of Ruby Bridges. I want you to think, what did you notice in that text? What are two things that you noticed in that text? Tell me in the puzzle. I noticed that this text, I'm going back in time. I noticed that this text told us a lot more about her family. It told us more about how she grew up. I also noticed that it tells us that she was born in Mississippi and that they moved to New Orleans when her dad had to get a new job. I can't wait to see what you notice in this text. Now I want you to think about what you wonder. What are some questions you have about this text? Think about question words. Who is about people. What can be about anything. Where is about a place. When is about a time. Why is when you want an answer to a question with because. And how. How is something done? So I want you to take a second to think. What are two questions that you have about this text? Think about how this is similar or different to Ruby Bridges Goes to School, My True Story. Think about questions that you have about this text. I want you to tell me two wonders that you have in the puzzle. So a wonder that I have is how did Ruby's family feel about her going to the William France School? How did they feel about her going to a whites-only school? Now, remember, when we're talking about those wonders, we need to go back in the text and see if we can find an answer. So my wonder was, how did Ruby's parents feel about her going to a whites-only school? So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the text when, when Ruby and her family and the other I also noticed that the text said that there were three other black girls who were going to a whites only school. So let's see what it says. So this is the page where they said that they were going to be going to a white school. And let's read what Ruby's parents say. 
Ruby's parents were proud that their daughter had been chosen to take part in an important event in American history. They went to church. We sat there and prayed to God, Ruby's mother said, that we'd all be strong and we'd have courage and we'd get through any trouble. And Ruby would be a good girl and she'd hold her head up high and be a credit to her own people and a credit to all the American people. We prayed long and hard. So can I answer that question now? Yes. How did Ruby's parents feel about her going to a new school? How did they feel? Tell me in the puzzle. The text tells us that they were proud and that they had to be strong and they had to be brave and courageous. This was, this was a really tricky and scary situation. But what did they have? They had a growth mindset. But they knew Ruby was a good girl. Another wonder I have is when did Ruby start at the William France Elementary School? When did Ruby start at the William France Elementary School? Hmm. Where should I go in my text to try to find the answer to my wonder? Should I go back to the beginning of the text, the middle of the text, or the end of the text? Where do you think I should go to find out when she started at the William France? I can go back to the beginning and let's see. This is the day that the judge is telling them. At that time, black and white children were went to separate schools in New Orleans. The black children were not able to receive the same education as white children. It wasn't fair and it was against the nation's law. In 1960, a judge ordered four black girls to go to two white elementary schools. All right, so smarties, did my question get answered? When did Ruby Bridges start going to the William France Elementary? What year did she start going to that school? Tell me in the puzzle. 1960. So smarties, when you have those wonders, when you have those questions about a text, we don't just ask those questions because... It's what Miss Mason asks us to do. No, we ask those questions so we can go back in the text and explore to see if we can have those wonders, those questions answered. Rereading texts help us understand our text better. Rereading chunks, rereading sections of text, even rereading one word or a sentence help, can help us understand what the author wants us to learn from their writing. All right, so Smarties, in our last writing, you wrote a narrative from Ruby Bridges' perspective. Now, we talked about how narrative writings are, are texts that tell stories. They are texts that tell stories. And we talked about how we could organize our writing using a scape chart, talking about the settings, the characters, the actions of the characters, the problem, and the ending. For this section of lessons, you guys are going to be writing about an exploded moment. Do that with me. Ready? Exploded moment. So what is an exploded moment? Well, let's think about the meaning of the word exploded and the word moment. So exploded means to suddenly put out energy or burst open. So think about fireworks. They burst in the sky. They explode in the sky. And a moment is a short period of time. So an exploded moment in writing, in text, is when we learn about the feelings, the thoughts, and the actions of our character in one moment. In one moment. So we learn. So think about Ruby Bridges. Think about the moment that she saw that mob for the first time. We're going to be looking at two paragraphs. We're going to be looking at two paragraphs, and I want you to think which paragraph gives us more details about what she was thinking, feeling, and doing, okay? Narrative one, I am going to the France Elementary School. My mom is walking with me. I see many white people yelling at us and holding signs. They do not want me to go to the school. The marshals keep me keep us safe. I'm going to walk into the school quickly. I made it inside. 
There's the first version of that text. Listen to this version. I want you to think, what are words that tell you how Ruby is thinking, how she is feeling, and what she is doing in that moment? I am scared to go to the France Elementary School. It makes me feel better to walk with my mom. I see many white people yelling at us and holding signs. Why are they being so mean? I don't understand why they don't want me to go to this school. The marshals keep us safe. That makes me feel better soon. I want to cry, but I will be brave. We try to get in the school quickly. In this paragraph, I want you to think, what are some words that you heard me say when reading that that tells you it was an exploded moment? that tells you what our character was thinking and feeling. What are some words that you heard that tell us what Ruby was thinking and feeling? Tell me in the end puzzle. So the writer of this text, the writer used very detailed words to tell us how Ruby was feeling. Ruby felt scared to go to the France elementary school, but she felt better when her mom was walking with her. She was thinking, about why they were being so mean to her, the white people. Why were they being so mean? She was thinking about that. And she didn't understand. She couldn't think about why they didn't want her to go there. But she felt better. In her heart, she felt safe. And she felt better when the marshals with, were with her. Look at this last sentence I underlined. She wants to cry does she want to cry because she's happy? No. Look back at that first word that tells us how she's feeling. She's scared. She wants to cry, but she will be brave. So what did we learn about Ruby in the second paragraph? How did she feel about going to France Elementary School for the first time? How was she feeling? Tell me in the up puzzle. We know that she was scared, but she was brave. She was brave, and she kept going. She moved quickly to get into that school. All right, I want you to think about this. What if instead of hearing, I want to cry, but I will be brave? That's this last line. What if that was replaced with, I thought of a silly joke and I giggle? Would that sentence make sense with the rest of this paragraph? Instead of, I want to cry, but I will be brave. What if we took that away and said, I thought of a silly joke and I giggle. Would that sentence make sense with the rest of the paragraph? Why or why not? Tell me in the end puzzle. That sentence wouldn't make sense, right? Why wouldn't it make sense? Think about how she was feeling at the beginning. She was scared. People were yelling at her, telling her to go away, being mean. Do you think it would be easy for Ruby to think of a silly joke? No. She's probably thinking about how she can stay safe, right? Sometimes we can think of silly things to cheer ourselves up, but sometimes thinking about jokes doesn't even come into our head. Sometimes that's not even a thought that we can have because sometimes we're thinking about how we can protect ourselves, how we can stay safe. So when we are writing exploded moments, Smarties, we want that exploded moment, all of those sentences to work together to let our reader know about how important that moment is to the character. So we are going to be learning all about exploded moments to make our writing more engaging and more interesting for our reader. All right. So here is our narrative writing anchor chart. We know that narratives are stories. We know that we can organize our information by telling our setting, characters, actions, problems, and ending. We can talk about the time that our story is taking place by using temporal words like today, then, finally, now. 
And we can add details by adding exploded moments to describe thoughts, feelings, and actions of our characters. And Smarties, as always, let us wrap up with a deep dive. So today we are going to be talking about the suffix full. Ooh, in foundations, we have seen suffixes. Where do suffixes go in a word? They go after a base word. So let's look at a sentence and the underlined word is a word that we are going to be looking at deeper. All right, it says the teacher decided to wait and see if Ruby would keep on being so relaxed and hopeful. What do you notice about the underlined word hopeful? What is something that you notice about that word? Tell me in the ad puzzle. I notice that the word hopeful has the word hope in it. That's something that I notice. What or who is the word hopeful describing? Who does the word hopeful describe? Does it describe the teacher? No. What does the word hopeful describe? Tell me in the puzzle. Describes Ruby, right? Remember, Mrs. Henry was confused about how Ruby was so relaxed and hopeful about people coming back. So we notice that the word hope is in the word hopeful. So just like we do in foundations, I underline our base word hope and I circle the suffix full. What does the suffix full mean, Smarty? What does full mean? Hope full. What does that suffix mean? Tell me what the suffix full means. It means that you are full of something. So when, if I am hope full, that means I am full of hope, right? If I am peaceful, what does that mean, Smarties? That means I am full of peace. That means that my heart and my mind is full of peace, full of that calm. What about fearful, Smarties? What does fearful mean? Tell me in the puzzle, what does fearful mean? It means that you are full of fear. That means your heart and your mind and your body is full of fear. What about hateful? If you are hateful, what does that mean? Tell me in the puzzle. It means you are full of hate. And if you are powerful, we talked about how exploded moments are powerful. What would powerful mean? It would mean that you are full of power. All right, Smarties, that is it for our lesson in our deep dive. I want you to start thinking about those exploded moments that you see in the text about how Ruby and her family and Mrs. Henry were thinking, feeling, and acting in our text. All right, Smarties, keep that growth mindset. Good learners do hard things. And don't be scared to be brave. Happy learning, Smarties.